Yeah, it's Paddy Downey here, CEO um, of Orzone Gold. I'm going to update you today on where we're at with the project construction in terms of both the uh, schedule for first gold pour, our, our uh, capital costs and where we're at with that. And talk about where we see the project going in terms of uh, project expansion, some of the uh, recent exploration results we have and what they mean to us as we move forward here. So it's very exciting times right now. We're just about to start erecting tanks. So it's moving along very fast and it's going to be a great update in terms of where we are today. Brilliant. Paddy, good to see you back here. So you, um, I think it was uh, back in June. Um, yes, you're going to give us the so what factor here. Why should we, why should, why does it matter a bit? But um, I specifically want to kind of catch up on the debt package. Has that finally closed now? It was a complicated thing. But as it yes, it, it, it is closed and we actually received the monies from the Convert and the Silverstream this week and um, that we only draw down on the debt, at the main debt at the end of the year. So that all closed at the beginning of this week. Uh, it you know takes time. These are complex intercreditor agreements, but uh, uh, we're very happy with how it all ended up. So and it's a great rate for a junior company. You know, we're getting our cost of debt is just over eight percent with no uh, hedging or gold prepays or anything like that. It's a very uh, simple structure and like confidence. So yeah, we're we're uh, really happy to get that closed and get on with business. I think you might, you might have started a trend here because um, we've we've had inbounds and maybe you've had inbounds about uh, the structure that you use and people trying to get us to explain it. So maybe just remind people what you what you did there. Well, the main debt is with a local bank, uh, which is Chorus, which is a, a, a fantastic deal for us. Um, the uh, it's about one hundred ninety five to one hundred million. And that's a natural hedge against uh, any currency ch uh, change fluctuations in country, because most of our work is done in country. And we also uh, had a $35 million convert with, you know, 25 million with our largest shareholder resource capital funds out of Denver, and 10 million with a large uh, uh, business uh, corporation here in uh, British Columbia, BD Capital, who are mainly in the construction business and have, you know, selectively uh, invested in mining uh, opportunities, and we were one of them. So you've got the, both those parties. The convert is at, uh, at roughly a dollar forty Canadian, and um, it's uh, got a I can't remember two three year term. Oh, sorry, five year term. Pardon me. Interest at eight and a half percent. The the debt itself is a uh, around about eight point two percent. The other key thing about getting debt in country, we do not have political risk insurance, which is a high cost in, in some of these countries, up to 2%. So that's a, a cost savings for us as well. We also uh, incorporated a silver stream. We actually don't have silver assays in the uh, 43101. So how did we get a silver stream? Well, it was with a company. Uh, they're 90% owned by IAMGO. They're on the French uh, bourse. They know our project. Uh, they wanted a stream. We were, we had some metallurgical test work data that indicated we had silver. So they were willing to work with us and come up with a very um, unique structure for silver for 50% of our silver. So we don't have to, if there's any shortfall in that 50%, we do not have to make it up until the end of year five. And why the end of year five? Because that's the end of the debt, the senior debt term. So that silver will be used because it's not part of the main debt uh, structure. It will be used for ongoing exploration as we move forward here. And for a junior to be able to explore during construction, it's quite unique. It's, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's a highly structured um, um, product you put together there, or th th that has been put together there, I should say. It, I, I can't remember, are there any sort of liens or securities on this and, and how do they fall away during that five-year term, if at all? Well, the, 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 yes, there is. there are is security over the asset in Burkina. And uh, so that's yeah, yeah, and so obviously they will fall away once the debt, uh, you know, ends. So it's just essentially it's asset security. Right, but does that stop you from raising other money? Because we're going to we're going to talk about exploration in a no, second. No, it does not stop us from raising right. other okay. money. Okay, and the, and the, and that's we, we are very covenant light in that regard. Got it. Okay, Th that was my main concern on that one. So let's talk about what sort of things you've you've started. It's obviously the debts for a reason. You've got to start building this thing out now. So what started? What's going to be happening? And what's that kind of timeline look like? Well, we're well into it now. Um, we're actually pouring concrete for the main CIL. The plant site area is all developed now. One thing I will say, and it's a very important point, is 
when we did the feasibility study in 2019, you know, we have a team of people, including myself, who have built mines in the past. We were very, very careful in ensuring that we looked at the quantities in the feasibility study. We looked at the unit rates. We looked at all of those things. We did benchmarking ourselves. At that time, there was two mines being built in Burkina. So we were able to look and see, making sure that we had the right, everything was right. So now I can tell you that we are uh, detailed engineering is complete where we've completed earthworks, we're well into the concrete pour. All of those quantities are very much within that feasibility study number. So that feasibility study was done not as a marketing document, but as we were going forward to build this project. And the due diligence that was done really stood us well in getting that debt package in place. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we're um, in it, you know, the plant, plant side area is all the earthworks is completed. You'll see some of that in the photographs. The CIL concrete pouring is well in hand. We will start tank erection this week. Mm -hmm. So the tank erector is on site and mobilized. Mm -hmm. So that should really start uh, accelerating the overall construction. Uh, like a podium, we're looking after all of that work and, uh, and, and managing all of that work and those contractors. We are looking after all of the outside work, which includes the tailings dam, which we have started. It includes site water management, uh, including uh, uh, water uh, ponds, uh, bridges, uh, uh, river diversions, all done. We've started the mining. The mining is, it's called the OCR or the off-channel reservoir. It is for the main water storage res reservoir for operations. And we have to have it in place and ready to receive water by next April. We're well ahead of schedule there. The other key thing about that is we are the first mining company in Burkina to use and develop a local mining contractor, not an outside party out of Ghana or Australia or North America. This is a local contractor. It's a true joint venture between us and them. Um, right now, even through the wet season, we were moving over 50,000 tons a day with this guy. Uh, and the pit is in, in fantastic condition, even through the wet season. We are so proud of the work that he has done and how we work with him. And we're doing it all in, including our grade control, our supervision, pit dewatering, his work and profitability for under $1.80 a ton. And that's highly competitive. Now, it is all free dig. There is no drill and blast, but very competitive. So all that work's been done. You'll see that. And now we're really getting ready for the main plant erection, including the ball mills, the, the, the tanks, the agitators, the pumps. That's all starting to arrive. And I can also tell you we're going to be under budget. Brilliant. That's the, bit, that's the only bit I cared about <laughs> was because you've started a process here. You, you've built one or two mines before. Uh, so is the contractor uh, that you're going to be using. So, and you've got the skill sets in country, right? Because, because, because of that. you're not yeah. shipping them in because we've had conversations with Australians or shipping people in from all around the world and they're tr having trouble getting them in. And we talked about supply chains last time out. Um, but I will come back to that. So you, something you said that intrigued me. You talked about we wanted to understand the cost. We weren't using this as a marketing document, mm -hmm. right? Exp explain what happens here. People have built mines for a behavior different way than people who haven't when they get to this stage. So when you say, what, what, what do some people tend to do when they treat things as a marketing document? Well, you always have to be optimistic about your, you know, your, your project and where it's going to go. And, and um, but you also, you do have to be realistic. You know, we, we realized early on that, you know, that this was a great project. We wanted to build it ourselves. And so, you know, first of all, we selected for the feasibility study, you know, engineering companies that had worked in Burkina, uh, had built projects in Burkina, be it uh, like a podium, night peace hold or whomever. And we use them as our, our consultants. But we also had very, very strong oversight. So what happens sometimes, and you see it, is a number will come out, and then when it comes to reality, and you know it, it blows out. It's 20, 30, 40 percent over budget. You've seen it many, many times, mm -hmm. and we we absolutely wanted to ensure that that was not going to be the case with us. Having said that, there's a great track record in West Africa. We're not the first people to do this. You look at uh, Fakola, you look at WAF, our next door neighbor, you look at Taranga, who built uh, you know, um, the project to the south of us. All of those were built on time, on budget, or ahead of time and under budget. So we were pretty confident we could do it. 
West Africa, particularly Burkina, it's got a hell of a skill set of, of, of workforces there. You don't have to, as you say, bring in a lot of expats. It, you know, there's 15 mines built. So the, the superintendents, the supervisors, the welders, the electricians, they're local people. They live there. They go home at night, particularly from our project. It's right beside the capital. So there's not a big camp to house people, you know, truck them in and out. We don't have that. So it works in our favor in that regard. But we made sure that our quantities, our, our geotech work, very important. I can tell you one of the key things when I look at projects and look at costs and studies, what geotech work have you done? We did extensive work, like way beyond um, feasibility study level. Because what you don't want is the surprise when you start digging foundations and you go, oh, God, we've got a clay layer in here. Now we're doomed to we have to do all of this. We've got to bring in backfill. We've got to compact it. We've got to delay things. Make sure you do that right. It's the foundation for everything you build. It's quite interesting as an investor sort of looking into to this where you, you see people talk about the Lausanne curve and moments they, where you get the best leverage and so on during the life cycle of a, of a, of a mine being built out. And I was speaking to a CEO, um, North American CEO, and he said, we've got money. We, we're, lo we're looking at a bunch of projects. We've got 35 projects I've looked at and I've looked at the DFS. This is it, the definitive feasibility yeah. study. And he said, there are five projects in there which are doable. The rest is fantasy. But we as investors go, the, the DFS, that's fine. It's good enough for the bankers. It's gonna be good enough for us. This thing's gonna happen. We're gonna rock and roll. It's, you know, we're gonna make money here. But it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And that's why I was asking you about marketing documents versus realistic numbers that get things over the line. Well, you know, I mean, I, I keep a good database of projects that are built, you know, how long did they take? How much concrete was involved? You know, there's so many different costs of things in terms of, you know, the type of uh, cranage where, where you're located. You know, there's what they call on costs, which is man overall management of, of that, which is a monthly cost that guys seem to forget in, in, in these type of things. There's just so many aspects of it that you look at and you go, it's wrong. There's also, it's just not the cost of building it. There's, there's the financing cost, there's the G&A cost, there's the local G&A cost. There's the number that you see in a DFS is just a pure broad-based number without escalation, without financing. Without, and even then, if it's right, it's still low compared to the capital you've got to raise. So you've got to look at, at a complete whole picture and go, Okay, that's X, and if I believe X, it's X plus to get it to the finish line. Yeah, no, I, I just think it's a, it's it's a very interesting stage you're at now. It's like I think some people go, oh, the job, the hard work's been done, it's fine, money's in place, we're going to get this thing, but it's fine. There's many uh, yeah, slip between uh, you know lip lip and cup. Yeah. Okay, um, are you off there anytime soon? Yes, I'm heading there actually this weekend, so I'm taking down. Um, He's actually on our board. He's, uh, you know, he's been Rand Jacobs Engineering, you know, and he's RCF's representative, but he's also on our board. And we have a project steering committee, which is another key aspect of, of making sure that you're not kidding yourself when you're building a project, is have a number of independent people. And we started this right at feasibility study. This was not started like when we raised the money. We started this from the get-go. And um, so he's coming down with me. It's a critical time now. All the earthworks are completed. We're, we're pour we pour just poured the ball mill raft. We poured five, I think, concrete um, rings for the CIL. We poured the um, front end for the, for the, uh, uh, the uh, feeder and, and, and mineral sizer. So we've got a lot of work done and all the lay downs are done. The tailings have started. He's going to go down and, and, and do a report for the board independently of me and say, you know, these guys are on track. It's well organized. Safety is good. It's it's happening the way they say it's happening. We give everybody a month in report, very detailed, but it's always good to have a, a, a another set of eyes and ears coming down there who's been in the trenches before, who has built these things before and can look at things and can tell how well things are happening. And I didn't organize this. The board said they would like to send someone down. RCF wanted someone down. So we just incorporated it at this time, just before you start 
erecting the main steel. So you can really see how things are laid out. It's kind of interesting. I'm looking, looking at the stock of a lot of the gold companies, and obviously not been a pleasant year for for, for most. Most charts look the same, but the near term gold producers seem to be making a little recovery at the moment. You, you guys do, doing the same thing um, here. What's the what's the kind of the, the kind of questioning? The most feedback you're getting from your institutional shareholders are obviously going to be longer term holders here. Is it carry on as you are, or do they need to see more blue sky from you? Do they need to see scale? Because you know, 400 million market cap is nice, but y- y- they want more, surely, don't they? Yes, they do. Look, um, look, our, our institutional shareholders are are generally very happy with how we we've gone about this. We 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 didn't panic during COVID, and and or anything like that. We we went out for a debt package that was not going to compromise our shareholders. It was actually going to add value to the shareholders and not take away uh, you know, value on an ongoing basis to them. So our shareholders have been very happy and they understand that that re-rate comes you know, as you go through it. It's no different you know, where we see where WAF were at the, in the day at, at the time. Single asset companies, once they really start getting into the the steel erection, you start to see that Lasson curve move. And we we're seeing it with us already. You know, we've been able to, you know, uh, keep on track. I think people are, are surprised and continue to be surprised that we remain on budget because you're hearing so many capital blowouts right now. Some of them are senior companies and we're not. You know, we have 155 in the feasibility study or 153. I think we come in around 148 something like that that's the way it's, and we're not seeing any cost trends that are killing us we have like everybody else suffered the the transportation cost overruns that everybody else has but thankfully on the other side of the ledger we've had so many good cost savings that we're still under budget so our shareholders love that and they want to see it built but they do understand that you know, we're, we're really at the tip of the iceberg. We only have 14 million tons of sulfides in the current uh, reserve. They know we've drilled more. They know the, the pits are shallow. They want to see us looking at what does this start to become? And that's what we're working on now. Uh, we think that when the new resource reserves come out, that it will show a significantly longer mine life. The other key thing is that We did drill in 2018, 2019. We did drill on the basis that we had a better understanding of what was controlling the high grade. When I came on board, they had a high grade heads, but no high grade in the the reserves because they were following a very structured uh, model in terms of a shear zone, a main shear zone. Their variograms were, were, were following that. We realized that these these high grade zones are a plunging folded unit within that. And now we've modeled it. So I would expect that our gold production in the earlier years will be significantly improved from the 2019 study. So same tons, just more gold. Okay. Got it. So how do you, so when, when, when are we seeing this? Sorry. I would say it would be the end of Q1. We're working on it right now. And why the end of Q1? Because we're also incorporating an expansion uh, uh, study within that because we we are pretty confident the sulfides will become bigger. Okay. We'll wait to hear on that one. Talk to me about exploration because that's the other thing people want to see because you, 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 you reach, reach a steady state with these things. People always look for the blue sky. They want the growth component to this. Companies of a certain size find it harder and harder to deliver that. So how are you going to do it? Yeah, so I mean, the exploration has just been fantastic for us. I mean, we the main shear zone, thirteen kilometers long. It's very consistent. Then we found P seventeen in the south, uh, different completely, not a shear zone. It, it's a folded plunging granite diorite, uh, re- way better grade, more than double the average of the deposit. Um, shallow starts at surface. And we drilled that into a, a, a small part of the reserve, but we knew it was still open. We just didn't understand how it was truly being controlled. So we quietly did some drilling in March, April of this year, right beside the existing pit, right at surface, on the theory that there was something coming back up to surface. And we hit the best hole ever on the deposit, about 20 meters below surface. 
And that was like, like we knew we were in it, it was sulfides, but the, and then we had another one beside it, another one. So now this thing has completely opened up. We looked at it and said, well, we've got a limited time frame here because of the rainy season. If we think this is opening, let's take a couple of bit fly, flyer holes out into the gap and see if it's still there. Because if, it, if it's a folding, plunging limb, we should see the limb down that gap. And we hit 50 meters of 1.4, 600 meters away. And the next step is that there was some drilling to the north of that, which had very good grades, but they stopped drilling it. They didn't truly understand it. They, they were still focusing on the oxides and it's another 400 meters. And so now we believe it folds back up to surface again and it's still wide open. The interesting thing about it is you've now got this main shear zone that's only drilled to an average of 160 meters. Now you've got this folded granite diorite plunging and folding. Somehow or other, they're connected. They're coming from a, a, a single system. We've got to figure that out. Okay. How are you going to do that? Because obviously it's rainy season, right? Well, well, we start again. Rainy season's finished. Oh, it's finished now. Okay, right. So you're, you're we, allocating the usual questions sent in. How many meters? How much money? What, well, what do you, well, how do you model we're, this? We're pretty, we're pretty careful with that. So normally, to be frank, a junior cannot drill or spend money during the structure. The bank won't let you. Thankfully, we've got a great partner in Chorus. They've been on site. They've looked at the drilling. They've got some geologists on their technical you know, uh, committee team. They love it. So the Silver Stream, which is 7.1 million, is being dedicated to exploration. Doesn't mean we're going to go whole hog on it, but we're going to drill. We've got a rig set up. We're going to be starting to drill in, in um, probably mid-November. We're going to infill back from that big hit out in the gap because we, we're pretty confident we're going to find more folds. And if we find folds of that, that would be a, the, the juice again. And then we'll start connecting this. We'll also do a structural reconciliation on the overall project. What's controlling things here? What's creating the folds? If you look directly south of us, it's Tuwega, now owned by WAF, originally owned by B2. It's a, about 700,000 ounces of just over two grams. We're over two grams as well. It's a folded granite diorite plunging. Looks like the same sort of plunge as us. We're a folding granite diorite plunging. There's something going on regionally that's connected somewhere. And that's what we have to find. But the beautiful part of what we found to date, it's all open pitable. It's multi-layered. So you have you know, very, you know, significant layers of, of high grade material within your pit. So, um, and when you get the folds, you get this 30 meters or three and a half grams sitting right in the middle of it. Okay. You know, the, okay, so let me, it's a let great, me ask, great target. It's a great target. So let me, and I want to get, want to get straight. So I don't, I don't want to leave this conversation without understanding it properly. You, you, you've got the money in place and you start, you're starting the build process and you, you've got a, a debt facility there, which needs to be paid off. Right. We're talking now about expiration. You're going to use the uh, Silverstream money up to 7.1 million bucks of that because the debt providers don't like you doing expiration until what, what point? No, the debt providers are, are actually are extremely uh, uh, bullish on our expiration. So one of the key things is this. Our, our debt package is based on gold only, not silver, number one. It's based on $1,300 gold. A $1,300 gold, even with the expansion planned, we have free cash flow of about $99 million in the, uh, you know, the till. At, at uh, 1700 I think we're around about 150 million free cash flow. There's no preferential sweeps on that extra cash, none whatsoever. We can use it for what, if we want to pay down debt, we can pay down debt. If we want to use it for expiration, we can use it for expiration. Again, that's a, in a light covenant debt package that you would not normally see a junior getting. So, Paddy, I mean, talk, talk to me about, well, it's a couple of things, actually. One, being able to do business in West Africa. There's always been this, uh, you know, part of the investor audience who's, who's slightly terrified of investing in Africa, okay, especially North Americans, right? Yeah. But for you as a business, and you, you, you built, let's say, you, you built a few mines here. How, 
you know, it's really important that you do what you say and say, you know, say what you do and do what you say mm-hmm. here. You, you know, everything's got to go to plan here. So, I mean, what, what, what would you say, one, to people looking in about a company's ability to build mines on time, on budget, and do as they say in West Africa? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, and it, is, it is something that we have seen and tracked um, and also have incorporated within our contract with our EPCM contractor. So, look, we expect to start production in Q3 of next year. We expect to ramp up to full production in 30 days. Now, I defy you to find a North American project that's done that in the, in the last little while. And that's a huge uh, detriment to your nav if you don't do that. When you're running below budget, you're not getting the recoveries, but you've still got all your costs in, incorporated in it, your working capital, everything else, your cost profile changes. You look at the West African projects, you look at ITI, it was up and running within 30 days, it was above full tonnage and then went, just kept steady state beyond it. Hyundai the same. Look at Focola, B2's best project. Where is it? West Africa. Look at, look at um, Barrick's best projects. Where are they? West Africa. It's a place where you can get things up and get things running, but get things running smoothly, fast. That's great for your cash flow, great for your NAB, great for your business.